There was an article in Post Media this morning by uh, a columnist that I've been following for quite some time called Terry Glavin. And he wrote an article which was entitled, Canada Stands by Gopping. I love the word gopping, <laughs> G-A-W-P-I-N-G, gopping, while the travesty unfolds in Afghanistan. And he really takes a piece out of the Trump administration for what he calls, he calls it a, um, an, uh, an agreement, he calls it a disgraceful concordat. God, I haven't word, heard the word concordat in a long time. A disgraceful concordat between, and he, he names it here, between, uh, it's called Agreement for Bringing Peace to Afghanistan, signed between the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, i.e. the Taliban, which the United States does not recognize, and the American government. And this was signed in February of last year, 2020, in, in Qatar, Doha. And essentially, it was the, because the Trump administration wanted to get its butt out of Afghanistan, i.e. withdraw troops from that country. And the article goes on to say, well, you know, the Taliban have been carrying out acts of terrorism every day. And if you if you subscribe to BorealisThreatAndRisk.com, you know that there's a feature I have, which is Today in Terrorism. And I talk about acts of terrorism. I also have a feature called This Week in Terrorism, which summarizes all of the attacks all around the world in a given week. And if you follow me on Twitter at Borealis Saves, you'll find that I'm tweeting on a daily basis acts of terrorism that happen all the way around the world. And I can tell you, on every single day, there is one, if not more, attacks in Afghanistan by the Taliban. So this so-called concordat, these peace negotiations that the Americans are entering into with the Taliban, uh, ain't going anywhere. And uh, if the Americans decide to withdraw their troops, Afghanistan is going to return to Taliban rule which means ruled by a terrorist group, which means girls can't go to school and women can't get jobs. And anyone that looks at the Taliban sideways is going to get killed. So, you know, careful what you wish for. Uh, On the other hand, I kind of get it. So the Americans have been in Afghanistan since October of of 2001, just after 9-11, because they realized that Al-Qaeda, which had carried out the terrorist attack, was in Afghanistan, and the Taliban refused to give them up. So the Americans went and said, well, fine, we'll, we'll get them. Now, it took them 10 years to find bin Laden. That's a whole other story. But the Americans have been there for 20 years. And according to the stats that I just saw this morning, there have been t- thousands and thousands of American deaths and tens of thousands of injuries. The Americans have spent trillions of dollars in Afghanistan since 2001, and there's not much to show, not much to show for it. I was reading an article um, on a website that I that I use you know, called Long War Journal, which goes to show how bad the situation is. And even Afghan security forces, which the Americans have trained and paid for, are abandoning their checkpoints, basically giving the Taliban free reign to do whatever the heck it is that they want. We here in Canada, of course, we're, we joined the Americans. Um, very soon after 9-11, the first Canadian forces were JTF-2, Joint Task Force 2, kind of our, you know, our this is our kind of our commando team. And they were there since October of 2001. We were there on the ground till 2011 and, and has, still had some forces in place till 2014. We lost 158 dead. And the number of PTSD, it's, it's impossible to measure. 